on the churched young people. How different are the churched young people to the unchurched young people, if there is any word like that? Or how different are the Christian young people to the non-Christian young people? Can we mute our mics, please? Thank you. It says in the five in the past years, fifty. The church will play a part in their lives when they leave home. Only thirty-three percent of the church youths can say that now. That statistics used to be fifty-five and 66% in the past years. 55 and 66% of the church young people, they have said that the church, as it is constituted today, will play a part in their lives when they leave home. Now, as of today, that figure has dropped to 33% today. Now, 69% of the young people um, leaving traditional church after high school. 69% are the young people that are leaving traditional church after high school. After university, only 9% return as Christians. Only 9% of the 69% returns as Christians. It is even more serious than this because sometimes the home has no impact on the children. 85% of youth from Christian homes attending public schools do not embrace a biblical worldview. I repeat, 85% of youth from Christian homes attending public schools do not embrace a, pub, a biblical worldview. They may be passionate about Christianity or religious matters and things. They may even be interested in God or what they, go, or what they call God, but their beliefs cause anyone who knows the Bible to be worried. How? Consider the following statistics. 63% don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. 58% of the church Christian youth believe all faiths, all faiths, all faiths teach equally valid truths, which means Christianity, Hinduism, all Judaism, all those faiths, all of them teach equally valid truths. 51% don't believe Jesus rose from the dead. 65% don't believe Satan is a real entity. 68% don't believe the Holy Spirit is a real entity. So there is trouble. There is fire on the mountain, and this is the time to run, run, and run. Run to where? Run to God. We are about to hand over the children and youth who do not even believe the very minimum of Christian doctrinal standards that all Christians throughout all ages of civilization have lived and died for? What kind of Christianity would these embrace with all these kind of beliefs? Because the truth of Christianity and the Bible were not imbibed by these youths and they are not the root and foundation of their belief. Even their integrity is in doubt and nothing distinguishes them from non-Christians. Did you hear that? Again, the banal research says 48% of these Christian young people are more likely to cheat in an exam. 200% are more likely to steal 200% are more likely to hurt someone. 300% are more likely to use illegal drugs. All right? 600% are more likely to attempt suicide. What do you mean by 
200%, 600%. Speaking of 200% means twice more likely. 600% means Christian youth are six times more likely than even a young Christian to use to attempt suicide. To underscore the fact that there is really no difference between Christian youth and non-Christian youth, this is where I need your attention. Is there any difference between a Christian young person and a non-Christian young person? In the last 12 months, this is the analysis. 63% of Christian youth physically hurt someone when angered, as against 67% of non-Christian youth. 66%, 63% rather, of Christian youth physically hurt someone when as against 67% non-Christian youth. 93% lied to a parent compared to 93% non-Christian. 83% lied to a teacher as compared to 85% non-Christian. 74% of Christian youths cheated on a test or in a test compared to 76% non-Christian. So basically, there is little or no difference between Christian youth and non-Christian youth of this generation. So the question is, where lies the future of Christianity? And this is the real burden as we push in the spirit this evening, as we push for the next, uh, for the next uh, 15 minutes, wherever you are, wherever your children are, if they are close to you, this is the time to begin to speak the beginning order of God into their lives. What is the beginning order? The light. That the light will shine everywhere they go. All their generation will be divinely implicated to live the life of God to the very root. That none of them will live any other life outside of God. Begin to pray for them and begin to pray for the remnants, the children of the remnants across the world because our connection is not to ourselves, all right? Our connection is not to ourselves but to God. Later, you will understand the destiny of Christ in God as a typology of the destiny of children in Christ as well. We are going to go into that. But we are going to pray across the world because all over the world, it seems like Christian family is under attack. But I tell you, before Christian family came under attack, Christian, um, Christian community first came under attack by compromises. The compromises that parent pastors, the compromises that parent usher, the compromises that parent teacher, the compromises that Christian parents have had before their children. Children can see more. Children can learn more by, by watching you than by you telling them to do something. They've seen where you lie that you were at home and you were not at home. They've seen where you lie that you are at Iyaba and you were actually at Oshodi. They've seen all those things and there, there are contradictions. They could see some of these things. And this was where the standard started dropping. And as we are dropping the standard, what we don't know is that we are attacking the, the covering. There is a common covering and the common covering is, is declining in quality. The content of our common covering, our common faith is being attacked. First, by the compromises that we have had, so it's very easy for the devil to hit us down. We don't even know who has the original anymore. It's even very difficult now. In the same Christian faith, two people are giving, um, two people are giving two conflicting messages about a, a, a singular matter, and it has gotten to a point where we don't even know the source of things anymore. We are not talking of fake people here. We are talking of people that have really done a lot to follow Christ from their cradle, they've really done a lot to believe in God, but the compromises, the self in them is not, is not yet being conquered. And so at that point, the children are coming into a place where they are beginning to see these contradictions and they themselves, they can't understand it. And so the standard keep dropping. I wanted to pray. I wanted to begin to pray wherever you are and begin to push wherever you are that has even come to the earth to support the remnant. The remnant's family will not be found wanting. Light will shine across the whole generation, across the whole globe, and we will not lose our heads. Neither will 
helping our children lose our heads. Our secrets are unto God. Our errors, our mistakes, they are before God. And in the name of the Lord, they will be kept as such. Because he said, whoever covereth his sin shall not prosper. But blessed is he whose sins are covered by the Lord. That God Almighty will cover us in the name of Jesus in this time and in this season. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Begin to push, please. Begin to push, everyone. Begin to push in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you on all our children. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. No, sir, are you ready? We want you to um, push. Um, everyone push by the strength of the Almighty God for the next uh, seven minutes. And I will come back again to introduce Coach Lillian. And then we'll begin to push again from there. Please, wherever you are, raise your voice as we sing together. But I need you to push as Nosa sings. I need you to push for the Christian for the children of Christian families. The light will shine in the name of Jesus wherever they are. And the content of the world will be established. God Almighty, God across the whole length and breadth of the world, strengthening every remnant, strengthening their family, strengthening their whole generation entirely. And as the devil roams and roars and moves everywhere to the length and breadth of the earth to look for whom he may devour, none of our children will be devoured. In the name of the Lord, none of them. The covering of God from eternity will come down to time and it will be extended upon our generations in the name of Jesus. And through this meeting today, a seed will be planted in us. And that seed will teach us all through our lives on how to recognize God's destiny for our children. Thank you. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Almighty. It's a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, for me to introduce Coach Lillian that I've spoken about before now. And I will want us to be very attentive in this meeting today. Sometimes God comes in the cool of the day to show clear truths, timeless truths, but that are hidden. Truths that... Um, very, very hidden, but they are timeless, tested in heaven, trusted by God Almighty. And these, this day is one of such days when the truth himself will reveal, will be, will be revealed to us and to the remnants across the world. How do we determine? How do we know? How do we recognize uh, destiny? children how do we know how do we see the gifts how do we see the things that god has sent them to do to, to do how do we pick that vibration and the spirit so that we don't just go and teach them on things that are totally different and at the end of the day they get to the end of their life they just discover that they are climbing other people's ladder all along how do we implant eternity in time in these children a lot of parents do not no, because they themselves, at the middle age in their lives, they were struggling with identity. So a parent that does not even know who she is or who he is cannot bring up a child in the way that child should go. These are time, kingdom truths that you will not hear in churches, you will not hear in mosques, you will not hear anywhere because we are working under the full influence of the Holy Spirit. And we hope and believe that our lives will be guided by such. Coach Lillian, the Lord bless you. you Amen. Have... Thank you so much, DB. Good evening, everyone. I'm Coach Lillian Adibola, as I've been introduced. I'm your sister in the Lord. 
And I'm really excited to be here this evening. Thank you so much, DB, for listening to the Holy Spirit and just allowing him to guide you. I welcome all of us this evening. You know, when DB told me about this meeting, I wasn't really sure how the Lord wanted to go. And um, I asked him and I kept listening. It was not until yesterday morning, the heavens literally just opened and he began to pour out his heart for this meeting. I really encourage us to pay attention and um, hear the heart of God for our children for humanity, actually, as we begin to talk about our children. If you have children here, I don't want you to come under condemnation if perhaps you've not really been doing it the way God would have wanted you to. There is no condemnation to the children of God. You can always realign with the way God wants things to be done. So I'm gonna kick off first of all, by laying some foundation so that we are all on the same page. I'm gonna take some key words because you know we can be saying the same words, but the meaning is totally different. I, I remember a time when gay meant uh, to be happy, you know, to be cheery and happy. But today, gay, even though that meaning is still in the dictionary, has a totally different meaning. So I want to look at some of the key words for our conversation tonight. Um, the destiny of Christ in God. Like D.B. has said, he's going to unpack that a little bit more later in the evening, but I want to pick on destiny. Because when we're talking about identifying and nurturing God's gift in our children, we're really talking about destiny, you know. And uh, the dictionary will tell you that destiny is a predetermined state a condition that is foreordained by divine will. But I want us to look at the biblical description of destiny. Destiny is not um, a fatalistic acceptance of some fate, okay? So, I mean, it is what it is anyway, so why bother? God has already decided what's going to happen, so why bother? No. Scripture teaches us that we human beings are created with the ability to make moral choices and that we are responsible for those choices. Therefore, our destiny depends on whether we live in harmony with God following his teachings and instructions. So it is our responsibility to decide our destiny in a manner of speaking. Although we know that God has a definite plan for each person who comes into this world. But I, you, can, you know from the Bible, he says, I've said before you life and death, choose life. The power of choice is something we cannot abdicate. And with choice comes consequences. With choice, we determine whether we're gonna go the way God wants or not. Um, in the Bible, we see clearly that God's desire for humanity was uh, Adam and Eve was to be in the garden and dwell with him in close and intimate fellowship. That was God's will. That was the destiny he created, you know, he fashioned for them. But alas, man chose to live by his own wisdom and the rupture happened. Uh, in, 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 in Exodus, we see how that Jacob is blessing the children of Joseph and he crosses his hands to bless Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim is the second son, but he places his right hand on Ephraim's head. And Joseph protested, but he said he knew what he was doing. And he was literally elevating Ephraim above Manasseh. So God wanted Ephraim to be above Manasseh, even though Manasseh was the first son. And we, we see throughout the Old Testament how Ephraim had more people, had God was just doing everything. But guess what? One of the saddest scriptures that I've seen in Hosea, when the Lord said of Ephraim, he said, Ephraim has joined himself to the idols. Let him go. Forget about him. And so God can have, can have this amazing destiny for you, for the children, for us, and we make the wrong 
choices. So I'm highlighting choices, consequences, responsibilities. Now, if we're looking at God's gift in children, how do we identify and nurture these gifts? It's always good to go to the beginning to really know what is going on. So we, we, we want to go to the beginning and uh, see what, what happened in the beginning. Who are children? Who are these children? Where are these children from? What is it about these children? The Bible tells us that children are a gift from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. He tells us that, you know, in Psalm 127, three and five. So it's interesting, children are a gift from the Lord and we want to explore God's gifts in children. So we want to look at God's gifts in his gift. So in the gift of God reside gifts. Please follow me carefully. I'm just laying a foundation for our discussion. In the gift of God reside gifts from God. Okay? And he says that the fruit of the womb is his reward. Huh. <laughs> that immediately tells me that when God spoke and said, be fruitful, children are a result of that word that was spoken by God. Children come from the word of God. Be fruitful. And automatically, when you begin to think about the fruit, it denotes a seed. Typically, we would say that, you know, a child is, you know, a fusion of a man's seed and a woman's egg, and that's the child. So, yeah, we are correct to a certain extent, right? But the Bible tells us that the word is a seed. The seed is the word. The seed is the word. So you cannot talk about fruit in the absence of the seed. Fruits don't just happen. Fruits come from seed. The seed is the word. And we can see it in scripture. I'm, I'm taking us now to who the child is. Who is the child? Because if you don't understand who or what something is, you can never, ever, ever be able to handle it and use it or put it out to its best or optimal functionality. So we need to understand who the child is before we can begin to talk about exploring the gifts, identifying and nurturing what gifts these children have. All right. And so if we go back to the beginning in Genesis, always good to go to the beginning. In Genesis, the Lord spoke his word, right? And he said, let us make man in our image, in our, in our likeness. And we see that he says, and, and he was so. And so the spirit of man is created in Genesis 1. In Genesis 2, the Bible says that God took the earth and he formed a body and he breathed into this body and man became a living soul. And so we have the tripartite nature of man, spirit, soul, body. Every child is spirit, soul, body. A lot of us parents and adults, we forget that. That every child is spirit, soul, body. And the real person, the real human being, the real child is a spirit who has a soul and dwells in a body. That's the real child. So when you're talking about the gift in the child, you're talking spiritual stuff here. We're not talking just about their academic qualifications. We're not just talking about the things, their skills, the things they're gifted with. That's not just what we are talking about really. Because if you don't begin the house from the foundation, it's unlikely that it will stand. Please follow me carefully tonight. And so the child is spirit, his soul, his body is a spirit possessing a soul and dwells in a body. And we say that that child, the spirit of that child, originates from the word of God. Be fruitful. 
And the Bible tells me that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The one who penned those words that created us in his image is saying that out of the abundance of my heart, I spring forth words. And so when, when I say be fruitful, that word that we say the child is the word of God is actually a thought of God. It's in the heart of God that that word came forth from. Because you must understand where the child comes from, where we all come from. It's a thought in the heart of God. And so God will say to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and 4, 5 to 6, he says, Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I chose you and I ordained you to be a prophet. So how do you know something that is not physically existing? God could say that because Jeremiah existed in his heart. Jeremiah was in the mind of God as a thought. And so in that, in his mind, he was forming Jeremiah. He was already deciding that Jeremiah was going to be a prophet to the nations. He was already deciding. And you know, the Lord Jesus confirms this to us in, in, in Hebrews 10, where, when he says that, Lo, I've come to do your will, as it's written of me in the volume of your books. God has books. And he was confirming, you know, Psalm 40. God has books where he has poured out his heart. He has written stuff about the children, about each and every one of us. And so before we begin to talk about the gift of the children, I want to throw a question to us. Are we familiar with the one that brought forth these children? Are we familiar with the maker of these children? Because, you know, as D.B. was talking, you can see that we have a crisis. We have a serious crisis on our hands. Because if we're not familiar with the maker of these children, how on earth is he going to show you or me what he has written concerning these children? How? When we start talking about the gifts in the children. You know, oftentimes as, as Christians, as human beings, we tend to put the cart before the horse, right? And so we, we, we leave the foundational things. We leave the roots of something and we're clipping away at the leaves and at the fruit, okay? And if someone asks why are children, or look at the statistics that DB shared with us, why is that happening? Or someone will say, oh, social media, internet, and all of that. <laughs> but we won't go to the root. So tonight, the Holy Spirit is taking us to the root, to the root of the problem. Because if you can get to the root of the problem, then you can get to the root of the solution, if we can get to the root. So I hope you're with me. Just, just come follow me closely, okay? So there are things that God has written concerning the children. And so when we start talking about how to identify and nurture God's gift in his gift. Remember, children are a gift. God's gifts in his gift. The starting point is God. God himself. You know, Dibi said something. Parents who don't know God are trying to raise up godly children. Excuse me, how does that work? I'm not talking about knowing scripture, reciting Bible and all that. Even Satan is even doing that very well, better than a lot of us. But yet he's Satan. I'm talking about people that are in intimate relationship with the Lord who have a kingdom culture. Let me not get ahead of myself. So when we talk about the gift, God's gift in children, you know what God said to me today, yesterday, I was really, really blown away. He said to me that, he, he said to Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. <laughs> he says, I am the gift that you're looking for in the children. It's me, 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 God. I am the gift. It doesn't matter the multiplicity of the gifts, how you scatter them. The essence 
of all those gifts is me. All those giftings, it's me. I am the one. And I, I was saying to myself, okay, so, so why are you calling this meeting? Why, why do you want us to talk about this? You know? And, and he said to me, Lillian, listen, it's what, Luke 117 is why I'm calling, I call this meeting. Luke 117. The angel is talking to Zechariah. Uh, he's talking about John. And he says he's sending John, the spirit of Elijah, right? To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And the Lord says to me that, you know, the, the return of Jesus is so imminent. We're reading the Bible every day on CNN and all the news thing, all the end time signs, right? Of his return. And therefore, Elijah must come again to prepare the way for the return of the Lord. It is these our children, it is these young ones and so once more, I'm raising a prophetic company. He said to me that he, what he's doing is prophetic parenting. Prophetic parenting. Parenting by the Spirit of God. Parenting by divine inspiration and insight. Parenting by divine revelation. Parenting from the heavenlies. You know, Jesus taught us to pray and he says, Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Parents, and by parents, I don't just mean biological parents. Because we need to get back to that time where the whole community raises the child. I'm talking about everyone that comes in contact with the child. And when I, when I say the child, I mean from babyhood right up to, up to our youth. Right up to our youth. Parents that will know the mind of God. Who, like the sons of Esaka, they can, they can discern, they can understand the times and seasons. They know, they know what ought to be happening. He says, I'm doing away with the old order of Eli, the blind parents. Parents who are blind and groping about in the dark and thinking they're taking the children anywhere. He says, I'm raising a new standard of parent, prophetic parents. Parents that know the mind and the counsel of God. And they're not afraid to establish it in their homes or wherever. Why? He needs the children prepared and ready for the Lord. You can be prepared and yet not ready. The ten virgins, five, they were all prepared, yet five were not ready. And the Lord began to say to me that he's raising an Elijah company. You see, the tribe that, 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 that must have that sure standing before God. He said, don't talk about children and their giftings. Listen, when you take a faulty instrument and you want to use it to measure something, are you going to get a correct result? Absolutely not. You cannot. So he says, there's no point looking for the giftings in the children when you're blind and you have no clue what you're looking for because you have no clue what is written of these children in the volume of my books. So at best, you're going to misdirect the children at best. Okay, so a lot of us, we, 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 we say, oh, this child is gifted to do this. This child is anointed to do that. He has the skills. We ask them to study law. We ask them to work here, do this. We place them in all kinds of things. And he's saying, he had this question clearly. What is the source of that information you have about your child? What is the source of that information? you have about the, the youth that is in your corner, in your office, in your space, that I've brought into your space. Listen, you can actually be saying the right thing, but what is the source? The girl with the, the, with, with the witchcraft spirit, you know, the, 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 that, that was announcing uh, Paul and his, uh, his colleagues, she was telling the truth, but what was the source? And so Paul rebuked her sharply. Source is very important, very important. God said to Adam, 
Who told you you were naked? I did not tell you that. What is the source of the information that we have about our children? Is it our observation? Is it the school reports? I mean, I, I read about Einstein when they had sent him away from school and they had written a report to the mom that he was just too, too, too mentally retarded. There was no need for him to come to school. Einstein. And the mother, and he said, what, what was in the note? The mother said, oh, they said you're too intelligent. You know, they can't cope with you in school. So I will teach you myself. And look at the great physicist he turned out to be. If she had listened to that report from the pits of hell, are you deciding the giftings of your children by what tradition says? What's in the family? Oh, you know, we are all lawyers, so he's going to study law. Or he looks and behaves like this, Baba Tunde, Yewande. I know, I'm sorry if your name is Yewande or Baba Tunde. I don't mean to be um, naughty. Where are we getting the source? Where, where are we getting the information? What's our source? concerning children is it by revelation of the holy spirit listen because if it's not by revelation of the holy spirit it's witchcraft it's another spirit and god will not bless whatever he is not the source of so this meeting we, 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 we've said that we're talking about the how to identify and nurture God's gifts in children. God said, yes. But first of all, what I'm doing is that I'm calling the parents and the adults and people that will meet children and hearing what I'm saying to the prospective parents. I'm calling them first back to myself. I'm calling them first to come. Let me anoint their eyes so that they can see. Let me anoint their ears so that they can hear. I'm calling them so that I can remove the skills of their eyes. Because there's no way. God has said, he said to us right now, he is the gift that is in his gift that we call children. So a journey on identification and nurturing of God's gifts in children is actually a journey into God. That's what it is. It's a journey into God. And he say, are you ready for that? Because listen, let me tell you something. You see, our young, our young adults, right? I remember once the children said to me, oh, why is church, why is church uh, worship is it's always like a funeral? Why can't they have better music in the church? I'm like, well, you guys create better music for the church then. So why is it so boring? So we are living in this, um, this um, uh, I'm sorry to use the word, we, we, we are like a cult in the church where we are self-satisfied with our little Bible studies and uh, all these things that we do. The routines, the familiar, the things we are used to doing, with, we are, it's so ingrained in us that we are not aware that we are losing our children. Let me tell you a story. We had a program for Christian children who come to church every Sunday, whose parents are born again. In a whole hall, I won't call the names of the churches, in a whole hall of almost about 100 or 120 kids or so, we asked the children, how many of these were um, double teenagers, you know, 18, 17 to 20, 21. How many of you are really born again? Only one boy put up his hand. And we said to them, but you come to church. They say, yeah, just to please our parents. You know, like Debbie was saying, well, so we started asking them, why, why do you say just to please your parents? Say, you know, you know, you know, this is because our parents are hypocrites. They are hypocrites. So I don't know who they think they are deceiving. I remember one day in my house, um, the, the, the young kids were around with, I think my daughter and her friends or something. You know, but they were making quite a bit of noise. And I came out, I'm like, what's going on? The young guys, you know, young 18, 19, 20, university kids, they're like, we're going to scatter church tomorrow. They were going to scatter their, their church. You know, I think she had had people from different churches. Said, no, so what's going on? So this is a particular set of kids from a particular church. So I was like, okay, calm down, what's going on? I, listen to what this kid said to me. They said, look at all these fake people 
fake pastors and all these things sitting on the stage. Eh? They will tell us, keep yourself, be holy, don't sleep around. Yeah, there, there are Aristos coming to our school to carry babes. We have so disappointed our children and broken their hearts that we've, they've become hardened and callous and turned away from the Lord. And the Lord is calling us to repentance. He's calling us to repentance. Before we start talking about gifts and things in the children, he's calling us adults back to repentance, to the place where he can have a conversation with us. You know, God is saying, a lot of us say, well, God said, God said, he said, I ain't talking to a lot of them that are saying God said, I'm not talking to them. So I don't know who's telling them what they're saying. It's not me. But God is merciful. And he's saying this because really we have a crisis and the Lord has need for his people. He has need for his people because he's saying if we, if we come back, right, then we can partner with him. He's calling us into divine partnership in this prophetic parenting where we will create kingdom culture first in our homes. First, you know, you know, I've run school, I mean, several, several years. I've been head of children's church, a couple of different churches, several, several years, right? And parents think that the responsibility for raising their children is for other people apart from themselves. Apart from themselves. And you know, as the Lord began to speak to me yesterday, he said, look, just look through the Bible, Lillian, look through the Bible. God has sent angels to talk to people about children that were coming. Ishmael, Mary, Elizabeth, Samson's mother, you know, Josiah the king was prophesied hundreds of years before he showed up. You know, for some of them, God went into great details to talk about the children. I mean, even our Lord Jesus Christ has so many, over 55 prophecies about him. John the Baptist, I want to encourage everyone, when you get home today, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures, and I want you to read them. Let me start, Genesis 16, 11. Genesis 18, 10, that's Ish the first one is um, Ishmael, the second one is uh, Isaac. Judges 13, 3, Samson, 1 Kings 13, 2, and 2 Kings 23, 16, that's Josiah, that was prophesied, that was by the prophet. Second Kings 4.16. Uh, that was the notable woman with um, um, Elisha. And then all the scriptures, all the prophecies about Jesus Christ. Okay? And then I want you to read Luke chapter 1 and chapter, chapter 2. The angel, how he came and he described John the Baptist, his ministry, the kind of child he was going to be in details in details you see because when we look at these things we see that god is willing very willing to share with us things that concern our children in exodus 2 the bible says that moses mother saw that he was a special boy a a, a, good, a goodly baby and so she kept him I hope you know that it was not just physical fineness that the Bible was talking about. Because to every mother, their child is beautiful. She saw something special about that child. She had a revelation of the destiny of that child. Why did she do, why did she make the little um, ark and put it where Pharaoh's daughter was coming? She had a revelation. Do you have a revelation about the child that is in your care? Do you have a revelation of that child? What is God saying to you about that child? Because it is only God that can reveal. See, you can see the gifts, right? Because, oh, this child loves to play music. This child is talented in this area, in sports, in prose, in, in whatever. We have about eight intelligences, okay? Right? But it's only God that can tell you how he wants to Chanel that gifting. So there are many doctors, but God has a different, unique path for each of them. Each of them. And so when we, when we start talking about how to identify and nurture 
the gifts in children. You cannot identify except by the Holy Spirit. I mean the identification that is acceptable to God. He is the one that will show us. And even the ones we see, we take and have conversations with him. He is the one that will then tell us how that gift is to be utilized. So we, we quote the scripture, a very popular scripture, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Great. But you know, it's not just training up a child along moral values and ed etiquettes and biblical standards. It's way beyond that. It's not even training up that child and teaching the child to seek God's wisdom and will for his skills and abilities, right? It's beyond that. When I read the scripture again, this was this afternoon, Jesus, he said to me, he said, read it again. Train up the child, a child in the way. He said, stop, stop. I am the way. So I'm telling you, this says, train up this child in me. Train up this child in me that he might be conformed to the fullness of my very image. Train up this child to be just like me. And who am I? Totally submitted to the Father. Totally submitted to the Father. No agenda of mine. So it's not for you to be blowing up this child. Oh, you know, you have to study medicine. You have to do this. And then a lot of us are doing this and we are, we are doing so many terrible things. Can I tell you that parents pay bribe to even nursery school teachers? I had to ban them from my school, from giving gifts to, to, to teachers. Nursery, and you're wondering for what? And when, when the older kids start telling you, parents, you know, I, I remember a child that was in, in, in my son's school, in secondary school. He was so upset because his dad, a pastor, had paid the, the Wayek people to come to the house to give him the Wayek exam. What is this? When light becomes darkness, and the boy was like, do, do, is my daddy saying that I'm not smart enough to pass my exams? This is what is happening. I'm happy that DB talked about going back to the, to, you know, to, to the beginning, the beginning order of God, which is light, the light. See, the beginning was the word, and that word was God. That, word, that is the light, the life, the life was the light of man. And so in seeking to identify the gifts in our children, we need to reconnect with God. In that place of intimacy, in that place where the light in us is not darkness. So that like Jesus, we can say that is only as I see him do that I do. As I hear him, that's how I speak. And this is what he's calling prophetic parenting, power parenting, power parenting. So that when you, with the children, when they do all kinds of things, you'll be laughing in your room. Why? Because you're seeing everything they're doing. You know, in one of my schools, they used to call me a witch because then the school was in Surulere, right? So I would be in my house, so minding my business, so I'm telling you. And God would say, see your people, no? Honestly, like a screen, I'll be watching the school. <laughs> Teachers are really crazy. Look at what these people are doing. When I come and start telling them, I will call them, what's going on? I, what I saw this, this, this. That, they, they, they used to say, who is always telling Mrs. A what's happening in this school? It was, no, it was the Holy Spirit that used to tell me and show me stuff happening in the school. And God wants you to be, wants it to be like that with our children. With our children. I remember my son, my son had a bit of issues um, in his, uh, the last one, in, his, in the secondary school, in his father, you know? And I remember when he, when he came home, I said, what happened? You know, when they start talking very fast, like there's potato in their mouth, you know, they are lying. You know, so I said, calm down, just cool down, cool down. What happened? 
he repeated the story. I said, okay, since you don't want to tell me the truth, let me go to my room. He said, mommy, don't pray. Please don't pray. Let me just tell you what happened, please. Let me just tell you what happened. Why is he telling me not to pray? Because he has experience that when I don't enter my room to pray, a lot of things will be happening. What are we modeling for our children? They are smoking all kinds of things, crack, uh, ecstasy, all sorts of things. They are looking for, they are looking for power, they are looking for excitement, they are looking for adventure. Eh? I tell my son here with his friends, I say, hey, listen, let me tell you, you can't have a greater adventure than in Christ. Never. You want a high? Ha. Huh. By the time the Holy Spirit gives you high, you wouldn't even, even dream high. There's no high that beats God. He's the highest. What are we modeling for our children? We have, we, have, we have inoculated them against God by our lukewarmness, our clear out sin. And so you come to Christian homes full of flies if God were to open your eyes to see spiritually. The fire is not burning. The children are not being raised in the way of the Lord as a matter of life. They, they, they never see their parents praying. They never see them doing anything spiritual. It's only when they go to church. So where is the culture of God in that home? And the children will just replicate who you are. That's not what you're saying. No, 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 no. Who you are. And so God is challenging us. Yes, I've loaded the children with gifts. They have all kinds of things I've put in them. But the ones that are to guide them are so far away from me. So far away from me. Can you imagine an older child? Of course, if you start earlier, it's easier for you. Like I was sharing with a sister-in-law of mine. I said, some of the things God taught me, the, the anger of man doesn't work righteousness. I'm telling you, just calm down and let God do it too. Because if you try to do it yourself, it's really painful and the journey is too long. How can we have functional children when we are dysfunctional people? Naturally, a dysfunctional man and woman will have a dysfunctional marriage, and so the, the home is going to be dysfunctional. But God is saying, listen, I'm here. I'm here. Dysfunctionality is the trademark of the enemy. I'm here. I'm your father. Can you come back home? The prodigal said, even, even the slaves in my father's house, they're living better than this. Let me head on home. Some of us need to head on home today. We need to head on home so that the Lord can clean us up, sort us out, redress us, reclothe us. There is no condemnation. Why? Because these children, did you hear what God said? That it is better for you, you not you, someone that they hung a millstone around their neck and drowned them, then they constitute a stumbling block for the children, the judgment of stumbling blocks. Please, that must never be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is not just about the children you give birth to physically, your biological children, or those who don't have children yet, who are not yet married. This is about every child. And you can start in the place of intercession. You can start in the place of intercession. What we did this evening, interceding, knowing the father's heart, knowing that he's looking for what a righteous seed. How can you nurture? Nurturing means to build, you know, to nurture means to build, okay? And the Bible says, except the Lord builds. The builders are building in vain. So there's no way, you can't escape God. You want to identify, you need him. You want to build, you need him. You want to nurture. So he, he's calling us back to, to, to make ready a people that will be prepared for the Lord. An Elijah company, a prophetic people, raising a prophetic people. Why? Jesus' return is imminent. Is imminent. So even if you don't have children, you can pray. To know what God, what, you know, what's on God's heart. You can pray, you can, and beyond praying, we can listen. Over the past four or five weeks, we've been doing some series on the art of listening. 
activating the, the ears of our heart. You can listen and God will begin to lay children on your heart, things about children. You can watch. You know, the Bible says that to, to watch, to be sober. You know, we can begin to build up ourselves and take responsibility where we are at. Listen, when your relationship with God deepens and you're a friend of God, he begins to show you stuff. I'm telling you. He's just telling you. He just starts telling you stuff. Even about things that don't concern you. Though everything concerns you as a child of God. So it's not so much identifying and nurturing the gift. It's more about returning to God our first love. He, the Bible says Jesus chose the disciples first to be with him. Then that he might send them. So when we return to God, especially in this aspect of our children, he will begin to show us his heart, his mind. He will begin to grant us discernment. He will put the words of intercession in our mouth. He will begin to cause us to walk into things and things walk into us and we know what to do. We know what we ought to be saying, what we ought to be doing, right? So that you are raising that child by revelation. Jesus said, yes, I've heard everything you're saying. Who do you say that I am? So my question to you as I begin to round up is, who do you say that child that is in your care? Who is that child? Do you know? Or you're guessing? Or you're listening to every other impute apart from the one who sent this child? Have you asked God, who is this child? What is written of this child in the volume of your books? What, what, how, what have you sent this child on earth to accomplish? Where, with who? Why have you brought him or her into our care? What are your expectations of us? We are mere stewards of these precious gifts. And you know, God said to Moses, see that you build according to pattern. To nurture the children, it has to be according to pattern. What is the pattern for the child that is in your space? I close with a scripture and Jesus said that blessed are your eyes for they see. It's the father's desire that our eyes see and your ears for they hear. They don't just see but they understand what they see. They don't just hear but they understand and perceive and understand. And my, my, my prayer for us is that we, we say yes to God. Look at Jacob. Jacob spoke about the destiny of the 12 children. Spot on. Spot on. Can we say that about ourselves? But God would love us to say that. And my prayer tonight is that the Lord, as he draws our heart, as we're hearing these words, the Lord is drawing us back to himself. So that from there, he'll anoint our eyes. Because you see, as you look at these words, the destiny of Christ in God. I want to leave DB to, 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 to take that, but I want to tell you quickly, right, that Christ means anointed, you know, and, and, and you know, Messiah and all of that. It's set apart, consecrated, right? And we, if you think that these children have been set apart for a specific thing, the season, the time, by God. And it's only when you fulfill that purpose and destiny, you enter into a place that is called rest in God. If we fail to heed the Lord, we will reap a harvest of disaster like we see happening in the world today. I know about two, three people that their sons have hacked to death. They are Christians, hacked to death. I know so many terrible things happening. And we're saying, where did this happen? They didn't drop from the skies. You see, if you raise these children without the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the restraining power of God, your good manners, etiquette, crossing leg, using uh, proper um, table manners, horse riding, the kind of investment we put in educating the earthly person that is not living this place, if we put 10% of it in the spiritual education, the world will transform. 
may the Lord have mercy on us. May the Lord help us because he really desires to help us that we might raise a people prepared and ready for the Lord. That we might say yes to his call to prophetic parenting, whether you're a biological parent or not. May the Lord help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. DB, I'd like to hand over to you now. With that, I would like to say thank you. Please confirm to the entire community listening to us that I did not have any discussion with you um, this week. <laughs> I confirm publicly. I haven't spoken to you in a bit, have I? It's been a while. <laughs> So I am very happy to also confirm to everyone listening that there is no meeting like a spirit meeting. A spirit meeting connects two people who have not had any discussion about the content of a meeting and brings the word right out of their mouth. It's only God that can do that. I know that at some point, Tolu was confirming to me that she chatted with, with Coach Lillian and all that, but there was just one part that I know too well that I did not put in the content that I shared with Tolu. I kept it away and that was training up a child in the way to link up that the way to i am the way the truth and the life i did not put that in that discussion with you please confirm to me i did not put that anywhere and by the time the spirit of god will be taking us into the connection of everything that coach Liliana said you will understand that we are missing a lot if we don't utilize the full stature of our spirit dimension to meet with ourselves we are missing out a lot we are missing out a meeting or a church does not have to read from physical script there are spirit scripts come on now there are spirit script that belongs to God alone he himself is the script. By the time he reveals himself to the creature, the scripture is fulfilled. You begin to come together to meet people that you have never seen before. Words begin to come out of your mouth that God has shared to one and has shared to the other. God bless you, Coach Billy. God will keep you for us as a testament and as a testimony to this generation that there are still prophetic parenting, that there are still power parenting, Remember very well one, once when I did something wrong and my mother came to my room and said, I dreamt of seeing you smoking. Well, I've never smoked in my life. But I knew I'd done something wrong as of that time. So I told my mother, Mom, I fornicated. I did it. And she said, no wonder. <laughs> I saw you smoking and I was like, when did my preacher boy start smoking? Come on now, come on now. <laughs> there are power parenting, I tell you. But the eyes of the Lord that runs to and through the earth will connect with every covering that the parent has and he or she will know what the child is doing and where the child is at any point in time. So if there is a destiny of Christ in God, then there is a pattern of Christ in God. Then there is a pattern that God has laid from the beginning, before the foundation of the world, that we should follow. Now, this is where the truth of God is totally different from the old truths that you can ever have, Judaism, Buddhism, 
uh, uh, Irish Krishna, whatever truth you have, Islamic, this is the truth that God has a son and his name is Jesus Christ. And nobody on earth can come to the Father except through his son, Jesus Christ. If that son is his son, then he has patterned a dimension of the destiny of that son. How? Of everything that God saw in the beginning, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of voidness, the only thing that God went for was the destiny of his son when he proclaimed, let there be light. Hmm. And delight, delight was the sun. Nothing more, no night of life, no personal aspiration. God did not come to the scene to say, Well, it's about me now. Let me make this about me. Let the whole world know that in the beginning I existed and nothing else existed outside of me. Come on now. God showed Moses this beginning order was shown by to a prophet that was writing when he was exposed to the back of God. I always say there is no back, there is no front, but he was exposed to something that looked like back. <laughs> Someone said that. I hope and pray that we have more meetings like this, please. People need to hear this. Hallelujah. God bless HOP. God bless Coach Lillian. And God bless Tulu for putting this together. And God will bless everyone listening. And I don't know if there will be more series to this, but I think there will be. And Moses checking behind of God to see how the pattern of the beginning order was done. Are you listening to me? And at that point, what was clear was God did not come to the scene to live his life. Come on now. God came into the scene to, to, to show forth the only destiny that will bring out every other destiny. What do I mean? Immediately this light was created. The Bible says in verse 4 of Genesis chapter 1, and God saw the light. God saw the light, that the light was good. And if you go to John chapter 1, verse 1, when the light was introduced all over again, come on now, you will see that introduction again coming out in a way that resonates with the beginning. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Are you hearing? And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was what? The light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And darkness could not comprehend. Then he says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear the witness of what again? The light. Oh, sorry, who? The light. That all through him, come on now, my belief. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness to that light. That was the true light. Are you hearing it again? That means there is a fake light. Mm. Come on now. There is a fake light. And that's what Coach Lillian was talking about. If the light inside of you is full of darkness, great shall be your fall. If everything you put up and every energy you put up as a parent is nine to five, God bless your reward. Come on now. God bless your reward. The reward of God in bringing forth the destiny of Christ as the light through whom all things will be created. The reward of God, not living his own selfish life, was rest. That is why he says, discipline your child that he will give you rest. Because the reward of you allowing the destiny of God to be found with your children is rest. Because God had that reward. God had that reward in eternity. He rested. Come on. He rested. The destiny that charted the course for the whole humanity was delight. And there was nothing that was formed outside of him. 
everything else was formed inside of this light. That was the reward of God bringing this light to bear. It was through this light that everything was created. Oh, come on now. The greater light and the lesser light got illumination from this light. I wish Illuminati can hear this, that there is no light outside the true light. Come on, come on, come on. There is no light outside the true light. So for a parent that wants to train a child, you must enter into the light first to see the light that is given to you in the children. You cannot locate the destiny of any child outside of the light. You yourself must enter into that light. That's why Cotillion said the journey of children is the journey of God. The journey of God will bring you into the journey of how you will train up your child. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. So if everything that you have worked for is to train your child for 17 years, six years in primary school, six years in secondary school, six years, oh, four years in the university, and then to do NYC or to work, if that is all that you are building up, great is your fall. Because I don't care what he build. Because after the fall, everything that man built, even plane, everything, even rocket science, everything that man did, space, everything he did, God saw it and God said he was sorry. Everything that man did, all the innovation, it was darkness to God. I don't care what you bring out. If you don't bring it out of light, if you too, because you cannot bring it out of light if you don't go into the light, if the light does not enter into you. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's why we have a lot of strange parenting on the altar of God. When a child starts looking at his father and his mother and say, ah, you too, you are calling on God. Ah, hey, now how? When we know what you are doing inside your house. That's why the, 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 the first recognized church is your family. Come on now. It's your family. Don't go having four walls. If you cannot have your church in the house, don't go doing that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. They are seeing you. They've gotten all those tricks. They know when you will leave the house and sneak behind daddy. They know when you will leave the house and sneak behind mommy and go and meet that guy and go and meet that girl. They know. They know when you will lie. On the phone, they know. When you are angry and they say, what is wrong with you, mommy? I say, I'm fine. They know. Come on now. They know. The only message you can preach to this first church, the family, is your life. Your life. Jesus said, as I see my father, oh, Oh, Lord God Almighty, Coach Lillian. Oh, uh, God, lo God loves you so much and I love you. Come on now. She said, as I, as I, I cannot of myself, I can of myself do nothing. As I, as I hear, I judge and my judgment is just as I, as I see. He, he cannot do anything except, he, except what the father does. Are you seeing that? That is how a child can grow. That is how destiny can be seen in a child. You have not entered into the light. You want to bring out the light. It will bring accidental discharge. This same light, God allowed him to live his life. God made it all about him. The only destiny that you have brought, you have, you have, you have brought to the, you, you, you have in your hand, the only destiny, I do not care who you are, I do not care where you are, the only destiny you are permitted to chat as a parent is your children's destiny. Come on now. Come on now. You want to hear that? Your children's destiny. Whether you have a child or not, the only destiny a generation is meant to have is the generation behind it. Delight. And you will see where the Lord and his 
is his, his reward to destiny. Verse 2. The heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. Can you see that? All day one, day two, day three, day four, all the things that you are seeing is only one work. Oh, is somebody listening to me? All day one, day two, he created the heaven, created it, created everything till day six. If you, if you are seeing days, he is seeing one work. Oh, how can I see this Holy Spirit of God? His work. Did you hear his works? No, his work. His work. Only the only destiny God charted was that of his son. In his son was everything. In him was life. And in the life was the light of man. Only one. Only one. You have many destinies before you. You have options. And your children and, and your and, and your generation ahead of you, they are just one of the many options. Can you see? Can you see your life? If God your father can chart this dimension, how many do we have in the church today that are following this dimension? When God rested from his work, not works. Quit all those many things that you are doing and face one thing that is needful for you. Whether you have a child or not, the generation behind you, they are looking at you. The young ones behind you, they are looking at you. Whether you have one from your womb or not, you have a dimension before God. No excuse. When God had rested on the seventh day from all his works, which he had done. Oh, all his work, not works, all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he rested. Can you see that, the reward? That was the reward of God charting the holy destiny, the lights, the holy destiny. So in charting that destiny, you will see that destiny as the way. You will see that destiny as the truth. You will see that destiny as the, as, as the life. You will see that destiny as the door. He was introducing himself. He was opening himself up. And he was showing that the father did not need to send me to school. The father has laid out my destiny in him. I look at him like this and I see my destiny. Oh. Come on now, come on now. How many of our children will look at us and say, I want to be like you? Come on now, come on. How many? God took everything inside of him to train his son. Come on. In the way he should go. The way, the way. He is the way. So when you locate yourself in the way, you will see in the eternal sacred order. Come on, what is that message to you? That message I want everybody to go and listen to it. I preached about the destiny of, of God when I talked about the three dimensions. It was, it was a meeting about the work, uh, the, the, the professionals. I've forgotten the topic of that message, but I will, I, will, I will implore everyone to connect to that message. When you begin to see the, the eternal sacred order of God, the destiny of Christ in God, the destiny of God, the dimension of God in the Trinity. Oh, Lord God Almighty. See, inside of him is the way. Hmm? So when you locate the way, come on, leave your child alone, leave your child alone. And thank you, extending the frontiers of Zion in Babylon, part one and two, go and look for that message. Tolu will send it to you. See, leave your child alone, leave everything that is inside of you. Locate the way. Inside of the way, he will tell you the, what he has given to you or who he has given to you. Inside the way, you will now see he should go. Oh. <laughs> Train up your child in the way he should go. If you want to break that English, you will see the revelation in what God is saying. In the way. He said, I am the way. Then he should go. Which means he should go in the way. I am the way. He should go in the way. 
I am the way. So that when he is old, he will not depart from it. You see, the sons of the kingdom can never be lost. And I will tell you where we are getting this wrong. If we do not get this right, I will show you where all this is going. When you commit yourself to the way, he will then show you how you should go, how your generation before you should go. There is a how. There is a how. That's why the voice of Jesus cried out in the ears of David. When David says sacrifices and offering, that who does not desire. No, I say, a body you have created for me, and I am now I've come in the volume of the pages of the book. It is written of me, O oh Lord, to do your will. In the volume of the book, David was also saying, Oh, in, in when 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 I had not even been formed, when all my life had been written in the book, when I had not even been formed at all, that was um, that was Psalm chapter 139, if I'm if I'm very correct. Everything is laid out in that book. Where is that book? It's inside the way. That book is inside the way. Inside that book, you will see the way you should go. You will see the way you should go. I'm sure when you came for this meeting, you thought we'll be saying, well, if, you're, if, if you are playing music and your child likes music, that means you want to be a musician. You are joking. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be thinking, we will say, if, if your son likes to draw, that means he's an artist. Can you just imagine how we have reduced eternity in this time? Can you imagine how ridiculous we have turned the gift into destiny? Oh, what a generation. What a generation. The only destiny is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is in that way that you would even see the manual to correct your son. Oh, come on now, come on now, come on now. Because Christ was the light, and in the light was life. Because out of that life was the lamp, and out of that lamp was the lion. Inside the light was the life, and the life was the lamp, because the lamp had to be killed so that, the, so that man and humanity can have life. In him was life. Oh, that was why the, the tonic that was used for Adam and Eve had to come from a dead lamp. It was from the light that was created in the beginning that life came and life was given to humanity in the garden, demonstrated before the foundation of the world, demonstrated so that he will die and the tonic will be used and the lamb will be slain. That same lamb, Abraham saw it and Jesus said, your father, Abraham, seek to see my day. He saw it and was glad that same lamb now became a lion. Come on now. And became a lion and roar. So it is inside that book that you will have that dimension to correct your son so that he will give you rest. Yes, he will give you the light to your soul. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 29. Thank you, Tulu. Psalm 39, he said, for you, for you formed my inner part. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous things are your works. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book. Can you see that? Not in your books, in your book. Not in science, 
not in chemistry, not in biology. Am I saying those ones are not good? No, they are good. They are good in those ones. But, but like Cotillian said, if you have given 17 years of their life to education, why not give so much more eternal value to them, to go with them throughout their life? The only place you can get that is from the light. You cannot arrogate parenting. You cannot. And in your book, they all were written. The day is fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. I should count them. If I should count them, they will be more in number than the sun. When I awake, I am still with you. Can you hear that, everybody? I will close with this. Because there is a compromise and as there has been a compromise in our value. Because we have not strived, we have not really strived to enter. We are not striving to enter into the light. We are not striving to enter into the way. We are not making our calling and an, our election sure just yet. Because of that, there is a declining standard. And you see, God cannot reduce his standard for two reasons. Number one, the saints that have gone before us, they saw that this standard was used for them. They are watching God as well. God cannot explain why he will reduce that same standard that he did not reduce then for this generation. That's number one. Number two, the devil also is watching. He can see clearly. He could see that God kept to his standard. And God knows that the devil will always look at him as the righteous judge, as a just one. These are the two reasons why God cannot lower his standard. It is we, the people, we are the ones that will raise our banner to his own standard. He cannot reduce his standard to a banner. You have to raise the banner. But because we have reduced the banner of righteousness, by little compromises here and little compromises there. Because of that, our covering is getting weaker. And our common covering, our, 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 our communal covering is getting empty. I hear someone say, oh, extend your covering to your parents and to your children. What if your, co your covering is empty? What if the covering that you are extending to your children, what if there is no light in it? Full of compromise, full of lies. What if the light in that covering is darkness? What do you think will come out of it? The only way that our covering in the spirit can be strong and the devil himself can be afraid of it is we hold up to God and we say to ourselves, it is fight to finish. I either get this way or I get this way. There is no other way for me. I cannot compromise anymore. Even if I compromise, I will come to him and I must live the life of righteousness or nothing else. Once we come to this dimension. Our covering in the spirit will shine and the devil himself will know for once that we are ready to hold the original, not counterfeit. This is why we have two conflicting messages on one matter. One matter. Set to lead once and for all. is either God or nothing. You see, there is no, there is nothing. You know, is either my election is sure? Is either my calling is sure in him or nothing? Is either I find and see righteousness and I enter into the kingdom or nothing? Once you settle it, you will start radiating the true life of the way. And you know what? Your children will start catching the bug. Come on now. They will start catching the bug. They will start seeing that, ah, mama's got something. 
Mama's got something. I don't know what it is, but this is original. Come on. They will begin to see that there is no deceit around you. They will begin to see that there is no, there is no darkness around you at all because God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. And you know what? That light will enter them. And no matter where they go, no matter where Hey, there would always be a pathway home. There would always be a pathway home. There will always be a pathway home, no matter what. Then they will know that the sons of the kingdom can never be lost. Set to lead once and for all people. Nothing more. It's either God's destiny in us through Christ or nothing. So that we can also say, like Peter and John, silver and gold we do not have. Do you think it's that house that you will give to your children? By the time they get to their generation, the, the building will, 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 will have been outdated. The, your architectural design would have been obsolete. What will you give to them? Is it your money? By the time you get to their generation, they would have changed their Naira. What if it's Bitcoin that they, are, they will be spending by then? Virtual money. There is nothing that you work for today you want to pass across to them that would not be obsolete. I once had a man, after working for 35 years, I'm buying close to about 17 properties in the names of four children. In his old age, the son started calling him from outside the country that, Dad, we are not coming home. We have found our own base here, and good luck to you. And the father said, so this property that I've bought in your names, what would happen? Say, Dad, what is even in Nigeria in the first place? Sell your property and enjoy your money. Who needs your money anyways? People? If that is what you are working for, who will betide you? If that is all that you are working for, your hand is shameful. Repent today. There is no other way. God's way, no option. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That is the only thing that must be found. That's the only thing that must be seen in you. I want you to see how our covering started reducing. Our covering started declining. The content of the quality of our covering. Thank you, Tulu. And Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac. What do you think that was? You think it was car? You think it was money? But Abraham gave gifts. Destiny is not gifts. He gave gifts to the sons of concubines, which Abraham had. And while he was still living, he sent them eastward, away from Isaac, his son, to the country of the east. I tell you the truth. That hall that he had was what sustained Abraham in the land of, was what sustained Isaac in the season of famine. All that he had, that was God. That was God. All that he had. I want you to begin to see how our common communal covering started declining in quality because of our compromises. And so right before our eyes, even with all our prayers, they could still kill Tolu Arutile the first female Air Force combatant in Nigeria. Right before our eyes, she fasted till death. People prayed, pastors prayed. And my question was, even together, what happened? The content of our covering is getting weak because of compromises. This generation can no more defend the faulty foundation. You cannot continue to defend the faulty foundation. God is coming in the midst of this age to break down and crash and crush the church. 
that has four walls right now so that the church of the family, the church of the firstborn son can come forth out of the family so that out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God himself will shine. And when he shines, saviors will come out of Zion. Come on now. And your generation will be blessed and your sons will come out and your generation will be generation of giant killers and they will become those that will stand upon the mountains of, of, of human influence and they will begin to take the mountain for Christ and they will begin to take the mountain for Christ and they will begin to take the mountain for Christ and at old age, like Caleb, he will say, at 40, they told us of promise. And at 85, we entered into timeless zone and our body was not abated. Come on now. And we stand to the point where we took the glory to God, where God took glory through us, where we gave God the glory through our life. Come on now, where by our own life, men begin, began to see our good work. Hmm. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men. And they will see your good work and glorify your father in heaven. If he is your father, you can't build any other standard apart from the one he has built in the beginning. If truly is your father, you have no other destiny other than him. May our children be blessed. May God Almighty keep them wherever they are. May God find us in his light. May God find us in his way. May God find us in his life. May God find us in his truth. May God find us in his lamb. May God find us in his lion, so that we also will become the tribe of the lion of Judah. And the lion of the tribe will be, will be fully manifested inside the tribe himself. And the tribe and the remnant will arise in the days. And the prophetic power will make them chart the course for power parenting. I tell you today in the name of Jesus, blessed are your ears for the hear today. Blessed are your eyes for the see today. The dimension of God's father according to the destiny of Christ in God. I submit to you that this generation will show forth the work of God. And no matter the darkness that is on earth, no matter the bad publicity that, that Christian living had brought, the sons of the kingdom will never be lost. Wherever they are, they will come forth. Why? Because in the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, there was darkness, there was voidness. But the beginning power brought back that dimension, brought back the order, brought back everything. I tell you, no matter what is lost in your children, no matter what is lost in your family, haven't you done all to stand? As you begin to stand, everything that is lost in them will begin to be found. Everything, because the beginning order will find them. The beginning order will find them. The eternal GPS will begin to find them wherever they are. It will begin to locate them, and the dimension of God entity will come inside of them, and Zion will come to maturity. And full stature of God will come to his being. I am a living witness that God, known to are his works from eternity. Coach Lillian is a living witness that known to God are his works from eternity. May the Lord bless the speaking of his word and the hearing of his word this evening. And the scripture is fulfilled in your ears today. That what God has done in one, he can do to all. That the, the, the destiny of Christ in God can be shown in you and in your children. As God has used Coach Lillian to take us through this evening. And as God has spoken himself to tie the knot together so that we can see what is making us to fall below standard. That the banner of God must be raised in us to meet the standard of God. Having this seal that the Lord knows who are he is and let everyone that named the name of the Lord depart from iniquity.
righteousness in God or nothing. This goes beyond religion. This goes beyond intention. This goes beyond action. This is destiny for us. God bless you for listening. God bless you, Coach Lillian. God bless you so much. God endow you with strength. God gives you order. God keep you for this generation so that we will begin to see older women, older men that are charted in God, that God, God is their own cause. God is the one that, that trained them. We will begin to see them that they did not go to any Bible school, but they charted the pattern of God in their simple life. God bless you because you will remain one of the matriarch of order, one of the matriarch of God, divine blessing in this generation. And in time to come, generation of children that are sent by God to you, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will circle around your table. They will be fulfilled in their lifetime. And the, the scripture will be fulfilled that whatever they do shall prosper. Because their destiny is not in school. Their destiny is not in what, who they are, whatever they do. Why? Because they will believe in the law of the Lord. And in his law, they will meditate day and night. And they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which brings forth its fruit in a season. And its leaves shall not wither. And come and say after me, whatsoever he does shall Thank prosper. You. God bless you, Coach Lillian. God bless you, H.O. And it's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please have a good evening. God bless you.